The large roundworm, or ascarid, is an extremely prolific egg layer. Each female can lay from 100,000 to 200,000 eggs each day. The eggs pass out of the horse with the faeces. Infective larvae develop within the eggs, which are triple coated and are not affected by adverse weather conditions. Therefore, they remain viable for prolonged periods of time, up to 10 years. It is important to remember that faecal tests do not detect migration of parasite larvae within the horse. An ascarid egg may have been laying on the ground for 10 years. When it is ingested, it begins an amazing journey. The egg's coating is digested off in the stomach. As the eggs reach the small intestine, they hatch and the larvae immediately penetrate the lining of the intestinal tract, beginning a 30-day migration. They travel by the hepatic vein to the liver, where they eat their way around the liver for 7 to 10 days. Here, and in the lungs, is where the real damage takes place. Fortunately, the liver is a very resilient organ and can regenerate itself. We seldom see any permanent damage to the liver from ascarid larval migration. They then go to the lungs and continue their migration for 14 to 21 days, again eating their way around lung tissue. Damage done to the lungs is a different story than that of the liver because the lungs, which heal by scarring, do not regenerate. This damage is permanent. After the ascarids mature and are ready to complete migration, they burrow from the blood side of the lung into the air side. Normal lung tissue shows empty air spaces, the alveoli, where oxygen is exchanged for CO2. When migrating ascarid larvae are present, the immune system violently reacts to the foreign protein and destroys the alveoli. Such damage predisposes foals to pneumonia and may result in pulmonary hemorrhaging in a horse that becomes an athlete. When a horse is just a few months old, it has all the lung tissue it is ever going to have. Because lung tissue heals by scarring, damage to these sensitive structures is permanent. There will be less functional lung available for the horse to utilise. Then, the worms crawl from the alveoli into the bronchial, to the bronchi and into the trachea. They cause enough irritation to elicit a cough, so they are coughed to the back of the throat and are re-swallowed as mature larvae. As adults, they swim upstream in the small intestine, robbing the horse of nutrition. These parasites actually have a very efficient migration. Once the larvae reach the small intestine for the second time, their presence there is of relatively little consequence to the horse if large numbers are not allowed to develop, which can cause life-threatening colics in young horses. Horses whose lungs have been damaged by ascarid larval migration may have to breathe harder and faster to meet their oxygen demand as they develop and are asked to perform. Horses generally develop an immunity to ascarids, so they are rarely seen in horses more than two years old. However, ascarid larval migration can lead to other diseases. It reduces overall thriftiness in foals and can be related to foalhood pneumonia. Ascarid larvae may have an immunosuppressive effect in the lung. That means they can reduce the horse's immune system's ability to respond to foreign invaders like bacteria and viruses. Think for a moment about how these ascarid survival attributes could affect your horse. The ascarids in your horse are still producing hundreds of millions of eggs. The eggs are not affected by climactic condition and they survive for up to 10 years. The only difference between your horse and horses in a natural setting is that your horse doesn't migrate 25 miles a day away from these eggs. Instead, they are contained in small grazing areas which ensure that they ingest parasites. Rather than parasitism being an insignificant occasional disease, it's become a chronic disease that horses are faced with daily.